Hey folks, this is Jim Hansen, and I am your East Coast Warlord. And I'm Kurt Schlichter, your West Coast Warlord, and we'd like to talk about a bunch of losers today. I mean, they're fat, they're stupid, they're narcissistic, they're delusional. You know who we're talking about? <laughs> the however many dwarves it is this time in the Republican primary. The Republican fringies, all on this episode of the Warlords. But we got a lot of other great stuff coming too. But we've got to start out with a giant lard ass like Chris Christie. What the hell, Jim? What the hell? I can only assume that you know some of the Republican establishment and the the Trump hating people brought him in because he's willing to roll up on Trump literally and uh, and talk smack. And he's already started. And the thing about him is. He's pretty good at it. You know, Christie's only good at one thing, and that's talking smack. He's a Jersey guy. Well, there's eating. I mean, he's eating. Yeah, there's destroying the buffet at the Golden Corral and doing backstroke laps in the chocolate fountain. <laughs> Look, if I needed anybody's carbohydrate input, I'd seek out Chris Carbo Christie. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and we can say that about all these guys, whether it's Pence right. or whoever the guy from South Dakota is. What's his name? Burgum? North Dakota. North Dakota. Burgum. I, East watched, Dakota. I watched his commercial. I watched his commercial. It was about six hours long because he had to drive from like to get from one North Dakota voter to the next one. It was like a three hour drive. So he talked to two people and it was a six hour video. And he seems like a decent guy, you know, and if I lived in North Dakota, I would probably like him. But he's not going to do anything other than waste time. Look, I don't think it's too much to ask that you know who the person is who's <laughs> right? running for president. OK, I'm barely aware of Asa Hutchinson, for instance, <laughs> only to the extent. And the only reason I know him is because he's such a, uh, a an invertebrate loser who sucks up to the Walmart board and does <laughs> things like, well, you know, I think it's wrong for Republicans to get involved in culture wars. Our job is to give giant corporations tax cuts. Mm. And plus, he's got a, a fun name to make fun of. And the thing is, though, literally, the North Dakota guy, I did not know his name. When Me they neither. Said the governor of North Dakota is announcing no him. Like, I had no idea who he was. And we're political junkies. If we don't know who you are, you should not be running for president. I, I mean, and what's he going to say? Make America North Dakota? And like, if, you, if you're Gavin Newsom Man. saying, make America California, you can go, no, I don't want a hobo squatting on my yard. Or if you say, <laughs> if, you're, if you're DeSantis, make America Flo Florida. You know, oh, that's great. Right. You know, Florida is a very free and prosperous state. If you say, make America North Dakota, everybody scratches their head. Yeah, you freeze to death. What, you get Fargo. Everybody's like, is that Fargo? They yeah, I think funny, there's a Fargo. They? I think yeah. that's the Fargo. Are there multiple Fargos? I don't know. I don't care because it's the governor of North Dakota and I don't mm. give a damn, Warlord Jim. No. And, and like I said, I, he seemed like a nice guy. His, his commercial was three and a half minutes long and <laughs> it was beautiful. There's some beautiful country. They did it not during the depths of winter when it's negative 160. For like the four days in July when it's <laughs> right. not, you know, an igloo. Yeah, when everything blooms and it's all beautiful. But, you know, and he was riding horses. He was doing stuff. But that's not going to win. And the thing is, all these people who are doing it are, are simply taking away time that could be spent on candidates with a chance. And it beats working, I guess, is the other reason they're doing it, right? Well, it's this weird narcissism. I mean, you know, yeah. Mike Pence, who pr presumably consulted Jesus on this. <laughs> um, I just don't think he listened. He was like, you know, Lord, should I run for president? And it was like, no, my son, what the hell are you thinking? He's like, uh, no, nah, I'm going to go with it. <laughs> Mother says I should. I, you know, I don't hate Mike Pence. I just don't think he belongs in any position where he exercises sole executive power. Yeah. You know, he's a good vice president because he's not going to get in any trouble. I mean, he managed to get in trouble on, <laughs> on January 6th. I don't think that was his fault. I think he was terribly no. treated by Trump. Right. I don't think, you know, and the thing is, he took, you know, doing what he needed to do. And now that's his like, well, you know, I did my higher duty of the Constitution. Don't ruin it. By blowing right. your own horn, dude. You're not Louis Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Mike Pence is essentially unhateable. If you're hating on Mike Pence, you're working too hard. You yeah, know, there's just, just no the, reason to hate Mike Pence. There's also no reason to like him enough to vote for him for president. Well, there's no reason to think of him. I mean, Mike Pence, <laughs> eh. Right. You know, he's not mean enough to do what needs to be done. 
but he's still going to get called a Nazi. Isn't he the one they had the handmade tail right. thing about? <laughs> they was going to make all the women wear handmade tail. Yeah, like he's going to take that kind of stand. Right. That would, that would be too hard. Yeah, I've said it before, and I said it again. If you're going to get a preacher, all right, you want John Lithgow and Footloose. You don't want this this spineless sissy, okay? Because <laughs> Lithgow and Footloose, man, you didn't have to agree with him, but you knew he was down for the fight. Right. Who who else we got? Uh, there's got to be somebody else, isn't there? Well, let's see. Are they so are they so meaningless that I've lost them? Uh, there are other women. Larry Elder. Who uh, was another nice what? guy? What? Yeah, I like Larry. I mean, he's a Tim nice Scott. guy. But him Scott. running for president is stupid. Uh, Tim Scott, him running for president. Oh, he goes on the View, and yeah. he's like nice and reasonable. You know, now, now I got to give him credit. All right, two things for Tim Scott. Number one, he's running for vice president. Yeah. Number two, he did a great job of kicking them right in the mouth perfectly politely and properly on the view yeah. and I, i'll give him credit for that i mean he, that was yeah, good for our team i mean look i don't think he's a bad guy no i just don't think he's angry right 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 and, he, and, he doesn't and, know what time it is he doesn't know what time it is the thing is there's this group of republicans the mike pence's the hymns the, the chris sununu and chris sununu uh like doug mastriano did a service for his country right. he was going to lose and he didn't run and mm -hmm. we should, yeah, good, you did the right thing. Good for you, yeah. Master. Good for you, Sununu. Uh, but, you know, this is a time where we're under serious threats to yeah. our way of life, our freedom, our liberty, our prosperity, our security. If you're not angry, you're not paying attention, and I don't, we don't have time to tread water no. in a sea of sissiness. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you are not leading from the front in the counterattack to retake control of our republic from the woke left, Get out. Get yeah. out. Well, see, what they offer the promise of, and it's appealing to a lot of, you know, sexually inadequate people, is a, a world without a fight. You're going to get right. all the stuff that you want back, yep. but you're not going to have to dirty your little hands. You're not going to have to punch anybody in the mouth. You're, you're, you're not going to have to do anything that's going to make the uh, other side upset and uh, rustle, ruffle the feathers. And that's mm -hmm. demonstrably false. That's simply right. not so. No. You won't, all you'll do is lose more slowly yes. and do so in a way that is acceptable to more of your neighbors than would be actually yeah. fighting. And, yeah, and that's, that's the worst of all things you could possibly do is I'm going to not do what is demonstrably necessary and go ahead and just lose that. It's the Jonah Goldberg old school con ink way of losing slowly, you know, and, and looking managing to regal. decline, there managing you go. decline. Yeah. Look, that, that's what they look. I, I, you remember when Ronald Reagan came in, Ronald Reagan said, I'm not going to contain the rush. I'm going to turn them back. And, you know, D.C. almost had, you know, a, a freaking apoplexy. They just said, what? Right. You're, you're going to actually fight back? Yeah. 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 And, and look what happened. Look what and happened. He won. Everyone said he won. He didn't just win. He led a revolution. The Reagan revolution is the greatest thing to happen in American politics in your and my lifetime. Yes. And, and maybe ever, you know, short of the actual revolution yeah. and the Civil War. Other look, than that, you know, and, and maybe World War II. There's a couple other places. But in our lifetime, Reagan took us from the decline and malaise and patheticness of, of Jimmy Carter to America being the preeminent and most important and most vital and envy of the world. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Now here's the thing, all right, Trump of, of presidents in our lifetime again, actually yeah. uh, I will give credit for saving the Republic. Yes. Because if he had not stepped up, fought, taking the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, you know, and all the abuse he did, Hillary Clinton would have appointed three Supreme Court justices, and I'm pretty sure we would be literal warlords right now, not figurative ones, although oh, we I, are I, I think we, ones. We, I think we'd be in a real mess. Look, here's the yeah. thing that our bad guy, our, our, our weak guys don't understand. Our enemies have a glass jaw. Now, Reagan yeah. knew that, and he threw mm -hmm. a punch, he shattered them. And Trump... Yep. You know, Trump knocked him back. The problem yep. is he didn't keep throwing the punches. Um, he had a bad but, habit of punching people sitting on well, around the table with him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like if he was Muhammad Ali, jumped out of the, you know, jumped out of the ring to go and get a fight with Ben Affleck. 
you know, <laughs> around the ring. The guys that are fighting us win because no one fights them. Right. Literally, they've got they, they, they've never had to defend their beliefs. They've never had to do anything. It was all handed to them. Mm -hmm. And once they meet somebody scrappy, they, they've got problems. It's hard for them to fight. Maybe Bud Light is going to be the moment that changed things back, because that's a moment when the left first knew fear for, yeah. for the first time in a long yes. damn time. Like you said, they've gotten away with it. They are the default wokeness and, and its dogma is the default standard for everything in this country until Bud Light. Well, that's true. And of course, you got guys like Mike Pence and Nikki Haley going, well, you know, we have to back off. Because they went and criticized him, now he's going to spend taxpayer dollars on a lawsuit. It's just like all this vendetta stuff. We've been down that road again. We can't go down that. Finally, something that succeeds. They immediately, they, now they get fired up, Jim. They're <laughs> right. fired up to stop us from winning. They actually yeah. despise the idea of us succeeding. It, yeah. And people are going, that's crazy talk. Okay, what fact do you have to the contrary? Right. What, 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 what is your evidence that they want to succeed other than they kind of mealy mouth talk about it? Yeah, nothing. No, there is none. No, and, and the thing is, it's the very idea of fighting. Like you said, they're, they're willing to say these are the things that we should have, but standing up fighting and, and punching the other side is, is beyond their belief. They, they're like, no, 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 that's a bridge too far. We can't do that. We need to, to talk. We need bipartisanship. You know, we need to talk to the center. No, the center is squishy and going to do nothing but wait for one of the two sides on either end to go ahead and win, and then they'll cave to whoever that is. We just need to make sure it's us. Well, that, look, that's how things work. Even in the Revolutionary War, only a few percent of people were, like, active. Right. Everybody else was sheep. Dude, yeah. it's about the shepherds. That's about the sheepdogs and the wolves. Yeah. You know, Trump's got an ad now. He had a, he had a good ad that came out. He, he left DeSantis alone. You know, oh, and he went nice. ahead and, and it's the wolves and, you know, all of that. And I think it's been used. It's used every cycle. But it's a great one because sheepdogs, sheep and wolves is American society. It really you know, is. And that's, that's how it works. And you just got to make sure that your side has sheepdogs who are willing to bite the jugular of the wolves attacking you. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about how the sheepdogs are are going to keep the wolves at bay. And here's a hint. <laughs> Mandatory assault rifles coming up on the Warlords. We're back on the Warlords. I'm West Coast Warlord Kurt Schlichter. This is East Coast Warlord Jim Hansen. And in the spirit of warlording, my counterpart there in occupied enemy California has a proposal that assault weapons are somehow mandatory. Ah, that's right, Warlord Jim. Look, I, I wrote about it in Town Hall uh, in my Wednesday VIP column, and you guys should splurge and become a Town Hall VIP because you get more Kurt Schlichter than you can ever handle. Um, <laughs> I simply suggested that we make every it mandatory that every law-abiding, healthy adult uh, United States citizen uh, own an assault rifle. And when I mean assault rifle, I don't mean like an AR-15. Although in the spirit of diversity, we would allow people to choose an alternative. I mean a military-grade combat rifle, an M16, uh, uh, M4, uh, a selective fire weapon, the same kind that military folks use. And uh, nice. I think there's some very good reasons for it. Hit us, because I would love to know. I, I believe in, in universal service. So first of all, I, I'm fine with that. But give us a reason why everybody needs an assault rifle. Because... Everybody who is a citizen has to have a personal stake in our country, in mm -hmm. our constitution, in their communities. Hell, they've got a duty to protect themselves and their families. Look, if Skin you in the game. Yeah, exactly. If you don't have the tools to do the job, you are just ballast. You are dead weight. I expect every American to stand up and do their duty. And if you're an American who's struggling to get by, who doesn't mm -hmm. have the kind of money uh, an assault rifle takes to purchase, 
Well, they're pricey. I, 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 they are pricey. I think it, it would be. It is important that our government, in the spirit of giving, in the spirit <laughs> of community, provide each American citizen with their own M16 or M4. So in the spirit of free stuff, which the left, obviously, they are 100% they be in favor, it. giving everything away. We, we will not just burn $100 bills on the National Mall to, to go ahead and stoke inflation. We'll give people something that is a useful tool. Exactly. I, I love it. Now, here's, here's an interesting thing. All right, you're going to get the argument from, you know, the usual suspects that, oh, my God, that'll just get more people killed. It's dangerous and there will be uh, shooters everywhere. I want to I want to shoot that down real quickly by noting Switzerland has a rifle in every household, a military grade weapon in every household. And when was the last time you heard of a mass shooting in chocolate and watch country? <laughs> Well, those cuckoo clock making mountain goats uh, right. seem to know how to live in a civilized society. And huh. I think the fact that everybody else is packing heat probably has something to do with it. Look, weird. It's a cultural thing then. So it's not well, the guns it, who animate themselves and go around looking for innocent people to slaughter. It's our broken culture and the drugged up fatherless losers we create. Weird. <laughs> Exactly. What we want is a culture where everybody takes personal responsibility for their role within society. Look, you got to go do jury duty. You got to pay your mm -hmm. taxes. And I think when all hell goes, uh, you know, when everything goes to hell, when mm -hmm. the stuff hits the fan, I think every American should uh, lock, load and do like the rooftop Koreans did. Right. Now, you, you, you mentioned there, well, I'm afraid more people are going to get shot. Well, I certainly uh, would expect that at the beginning. <laughs> because people are going to figure out, wait a minute, I can't go loot stores. I can't beat people in the street. Mm. I can't rape and pillage anymore because I'm going <laughs> to get shot. I, 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 as, uh, uh, as, as spoken in uh, Magnum Force, one of the top two of the Dirty Harry movies, nothing wrong with shooting long as the right people get shot. There you go. So we're putting heads on pikes. Is that what we're doing? We are putting heads on pikes <laughs> like the chipmunks raiding your garden. <laughs> so I, I told Kurt before the show, I was out this morning hunting because I planted raspberry and berry, blueberry bushes in the yard. And I built the enclosure and I've got all of it and bird netting and all of it. And the little weasley little pocket gophers are getting in there. So now I'm Carl Spackler from Caddyshack out there, licensed by the government of the United Nations to hunt varmints. Got one with my pellet, pellet pistol, though. Um, all right, now let me, let me jump to a, a related piece. I believe in universal service, but I don't think everyone's suited. Now, I assume there would be training involved, not just handing out the rifles. You know, you have to go to your training. You have to learn to shoot. You have to do a basic marksmanship course of some sort, you know, and learn the law. My vote was always for uh, Peace Corps or the Marine Corps. So there's some people just fundamentally suited who I don't want with a gun, let them pick up a shovel or a hoe or whatever and go ahead and feed the poor, you know, dig ditches, dig wells, do that kind of stuff and let them do that. But again, the skin in the game, the universal service, you owe the country something. Well, look, I've got uh, I've got some issues with universal service, uh, but if we're going to have it, I say it be all military. I don't want because you know what's going to happen with all the rich kids from Santa Monica. They're you know <laughs> the, the, you know the poor kid from Iowa. He's going to be mucking around in the in the in the you know in the mud in the water. The rich kid from Santa Monica is going to be reading bedtime stories to thugs. In, <laughs> in you know uh, it, no, everybody picks up a rifle. It, it, now it. I don't mind conscious objectors. We've got a, you know, they make wonderful medics, but you're going to do the hard work. You're going to do the dirty work. And if you're not suited to do it, you got two choices, get suited or get out. Okay, then I'll, I'll amend that to say, let them serve in soft skills of some flavor to start with, with the idea that if needed, they're activated. You know, and then you let those who are suited for it and, and motivated for it actually form the fighting force. And that, that kind of mirrors the, the way the active duty is set up. Well, you know, yeah, and, I mean, and you, reserve. You, you've yeah. got the, the pointy end of the spear with infantry and artillery and special forces and cool stuff like that. And then you've got support and other things that are vital but aren't actually as, as active. So something similar. We could work this out. Yes. But everybody wears a uniform. Everybody, everybody does has a helmet. 
Right. Everybody takes a risk. Now, obviously, there are certain people who are inclined to combat arms, like, well, yours truly, and yours truly, uh, will we'll gravitate to that. Other people, well, we need clerks, we need uh, legal NCOs, we need... Yep. Uh, uh, we, we need uh, transportation officers. We need people who recently came over from supply and logistics. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a movie we need to do we, soon. We, we will get to Heartbreak uh, Ridge. We'll get to Heartbreak Ridge soon oh, enough. Yeah. I love that. But yeah, look, uh, everybody's got to be in the military because otherwise it's going to be a festival of shams. Fair and enough. And the idea is if, you know, if we're all doing it, we all do the same hard thing because it's important that things be hard, that people yeah. accomplish something. You know, there's a whole generation of people who've grown up and never done anything hard. It's horrifying. Now, uh, it's come horrifying. On, Kurt, you're completely devaluing reaching level 692. Okay on Halo, coolest yes, war I am. game in the world. Yes, I am. Where I shot a bunch of people by flicking my little thummies. Yes, I am totally devaluing that. It has no value. <laughs> it's frankly embarrassing. Um, <laughs> as anything more than a, uh, 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 an occasional diversion. Although, I, you know what I want, though? I, I got to be honest. I haven't played video games in, in God knows how Me long. Me neither. But I want a, a Jamiroquai. You remember the Jamiroquai video where he's sliding around and the floor's going everywhere as he goes every direction? <laughs> right? I want that floor, and then I want a curved big screen TV, and then I want an MP5 as my controller, and I want to shoot everything. And I want to be able to move and run and do everything and have it basically be VR, but surrounded, immersive. Okay, give me that. And then you're at least training for the real thing. But the flicky, flicky, chicky, chicky, doodle, doodle. Eh, I mean, maybe it's training drone pilots, but how many do we need? Yeah, we, we don't need that many. Hey, but... A couple hundred. <laughs> but look, and this should be part of everybody growing up in high school. Civics should include, okay, here's the, here's the pointy end of the civics. Right. Yeah. Here's here. You know, you guys are all American citizens. Well, here's what it means. We're all going to go learn to shoot a rifle today. We're also going to learn how to stop the bleeding. Yeah. You know, well, then we I, show I, those Chinese school kids yeah. taking apart AK-47s at the speed of sound. You know, I'm like, damn. I mean, that's one of the things special forces in the in the course, you got to do what's called the pile test where they take, you know, five weapons, a pistol, a sub gun, a shotgun, a machine gun and all those, take them all apart and put all the parts in a pile. And they got to put them back together. I'm watching these Chinese school kids. I'm saying, that's who I want doing the pile test for me because that was hard. But look, uh, it, it, people will rise to the occasion. I think American citizens will rise to the needs of American citizenship. We've done it for many, many generations. Now we mm. seem to want to outsource it to, uh, uh, you know, uh, a few random kids who come from rural states. Well, I got news for you. This is uh, this is a participation sport, buddy, not a spectator sport. And, and those kids are not showing up. Because the rest of the military at this point is no longer a warrior-based mentality. They've lost that. So instilling that in the population at large as an antidote to the woke garbage and the pride parades and pronoun practice that the military has devolved to at this point cannot do anything but help. We're back here on The Warlords. I'm West Coast Warlord Kurt Schlichter. And this is East Coast Warlord Jim Hansen. And in Warlords on Film, Fast Times at Ridgemont High has been referenced probably six times previously on our shows. Today, we're going to do it. Much like the kids on Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah, there you go. The thing about Fast Times at Ridgemont High, especially for me growing up as a California kid, that it, it took place in the San Fernando Valley. I was uh, living a little north. Uh, I've never seen a movie that resonated with me as somebody the same age as these kids. And I must right. have seen it four or five times in the theater. Mm -hmm. That was 1982. I graduated from high school. Yeah. That year. Yeah, it was my junior year. And um, I'll tell you, I can never listen to the cars quite the same way again. And let's just not let's just not even hold anybody in suspense because the actual greatest scene in that movie was when Phoebe Cates emerges from the swimming pool to the dulcet tones of the cars playing moving in stereo. And the best part, she was she was pretty, 
but she wasn't too pretty. Yeah. That was the thing pretty about Pretty but accessible. She looked like the best looking girl in your class. Yes, she did. In your high school. And, and Jennifer and Jason perfect. Lee, uh, yeah. as her, her friend, was, they, they looked like the kids I was going to school with. Right. And they acted like the kids I was going to school with. Um, Believable. And the thing is, it's a very, very funny movie. Thanks largely to uh, uh, Sean Penn. Uh, Spicoli. That's the name they gave me. You're ripping my car. Yeah. Hey, bud, what's your problem? But but there yeah. are a lot, there's a lot of funny stuff in it. But, you know, it's a dark movie in a lot of ways. It, it, there's some bad things happen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let's the, not pretend. The heroine, um, you know, ends up losing her virginity in a freaking baseball dugout staring at a uh, graffiti that says, Surf Nazi must die. I mean, that's not, <laughs> some it's not like, dude. I'm, not, look, I, I'm not a chick, but I'm, I'm thinking that's not every girl's fantasy or her first time. No, no, that was not the princess fantasy she, uh, she went to sleep thinking about. No, and, 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 and you know, what's interesting, this girl is completely lost and she's looking, you know, she, she's looking for love in guy after guy after guy. And right. the guys she gets with, mostly trail like garbage, the one she tosses away actually likes her uh but you know where's she gonna go for guidance you never see a parent <laughs> Ooh, i hadn't thought about that there is no parent you don't know they don't even talk about wow. their parents that's it there, there's not a parent in it because uh you know except your boss at the uh, all-american burger or you know or your teachers right. uh, huh. the, the adults just say you just had no connection with these adults now, that's interesting. Now, all right, the, the movie came from a, a book written by Cameron Crowe. Yes. Who, famous for being one of the youngest you yep. know, writers for Rolling Stone, who at 15 and 16-year-old is going on the road with real yes. rock bands. Yes, living almost famous. That, that, that Ooh, movie yeah. was actually his life. Yeah. And it, so he, he went undercover yes. in San Diego. It, uh, he literally Claremont went High back school. to school and did it. Uh, in fact, a Army buddy of mine was actually one of his classmates. He was there. Wow. He, he was in it. Oh. I was to find out what, what's the secret life of these kids. And I don't think any right. movie's ever done it better before or since. No, well, he was kind of reliving. You know, he missed out on his last couple yeah. years of high school. So at 22, he goes back, he plays the game. And he had the, the perspective by then to look at everyone and see it because he wasn't really there. Because the problem is, as a kid, you know, if you're one of those kids in high school, Life is too hard to really pay attention to everybody else, yes. you know, the way he was able to. Yeah, I mean, they talk about, I mean, look, uh, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee's character, you know, gets an abortion. Yeah. And, and there's, you know, even today when most of the Hollywood stars are, eh, show your abortion, they're terrified right. to actually look at dispassionately. You know, you have her, her, her boyfriend won't drive her there. She has to talk her brother right. into it. You know, uh, and it's and it's at an ugly place. Mm. Uh, she's shaken. She's uh, shaken going in. She's shaken when she comes out. Uh, it doesn't whitewash anything. It is very right. dispassionate about this stuff. And they're not preaching at you. You draw your own conclusions. And, you know, my conclusion watching that was this, you know, this is a bad thing. Yeah, and, and they at least treated it that yes. way. Yes. You know, that's the problem. If they well, did it today, she would she would be wearing a I'm proud I got yeah. my first abortion t shirt. Yeah, they didn't you know they, they they left it to you. They said, Here it is, here's her situation, uh, and it is, you know, not pretty, and you've got to draw your own conclusion. I drew mine. Yeah. I think a lot of other people drew theirs. It, it is an uncompromising movie, but it is an unbelievably funny movie too. Holy yeah. cow, it's funny. Yeah, he, he managed to, to make even the, the dark parts had dark humor attached to most of them. You know, there were a few parts that were just pure, you know, pathos. Yeah. But a lot of it, there was there was always the undertone of, you know, it's like Spicoli's weed smoke yeah. is wafting through the whole thing. And no matter what, everybody had a little bit of action, you know, a contact high as they're <laughs> busy living their painful lives and, and horrid existences. And I don't think you can talk about Fast Times at Ridgemont High without talking about the soundtrack, which may be the best soundtrack of any movie ever. It broke uh, Southern California new wave alternative music 
uh, across the country because a lot of people hadn't mm -hmm. heard it before. But you had the uh, the Go Go's. We got the beat mm -hmm. is the theme song. Uh, yep. My gosh, Oingo Boingo's in it. I think they got you know Bruce Springsteen at one point. Blech. Tom Petty's in <laughs> you it. You know what's funny too is uh, because of his time at Rolling Stone, Cameron Crowe, he actually got Led Zeppelin. Yes to let them use cashmere yes. in the movie. And Zeppelin never lets anybody use anything. So obviously the kid did something uh, right when he was playing rock and roll journalist. And it's great. It's also great because somebody says, you should use this song off this album. And then they cut to cashmere in the car with uh, uh, you know, Brian Backer <laughs> and uh, Jennifer Jason Leigh. And it's cashmere, which was not that song. It was on a different album. <laughs> hey, you don't have to get everything right. Yeah, it's it's one of the few movies that I would classify as perfect. It's yeah. just so good, and I can watch it now, and it takes me back 40 years. <laughs> oh, my God, 40 years! Oh, boy. But, I mean, come on. It's Piccoli said, all I need oh, is some yeah, tasty some waves, tasty a nice waves, buzz. Cool buzz. I'm fine. Oh, and, <laughs> you know? and, by the way, I think uh, Warlord Jim and I would like to offer our congratulations to Kevin Klein, who married Phoebe Cates in the late 80s and is still with her. <laughs> and uh, she is unbelievably pretty. And yeah. if you notice that there's a... Uh, 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 a, a resemblance between uh, my beautiful arena and Phoebe Cates. I don't know if that's, I won't say whether that's intentional or not, but I'm not complaining. Wow, dude. That's a, that's a bold statement right I'm there. I'm just saying. You know, I'm dark, just uh, saying. You know, dark exotic beauties are uh, uh, Kurt's uh, mm. demographic. There you go. Well, as all of the, the great movies we walk through, we highly recommend you take the time, go back and watch it because you're gonna get more out of it this time around. That's the cool thing about flavor and seasoning of life. Yep. You can look back and see things you never would have seen before. Ah, oh, hell to the yeah. We're back finishing up another epic Warlord show. And since Elon invited everyone to have a show on Twitter, I think we led the charge to that, didn't we? We were on, and then this guy named Tucker Carlson got his show on. And now everyone else, of course, is gonna pile on. But I, I would like to at least again stake the claim, we the Warlords were first. Yeah, we were the first here uh, uh, with, with, with the show. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and uh, I think it's going pretty well. We're getting a lot of people watching. You gotta tell your friends. At the Warlords show, you can follow us there, and it will be when, as soon as Elon gets the platform sorted out, it'll be a lot easier, and there'll be a landing page where all the shows yep. are and all that kind of stuff. And by then, we'll have merch because we got to have some cool. Oh merch. yeah, Warlords we have, merch. Like, Warlord, we need a logo. We need a Viking axe. Is I think what we need. The Warlord. <laughs> ah, right. Something. A Viking axe that forms an M of four. Like that. Ooh. All right. Something to think about. We need we, any graphic artists out there, yeah, please. Any graphic artists who also forge on an anvil, you know, we because <laughs> it's got to be real and it's got to work. All right. Um, so hit us. Hit us. What's our final topic for the night? Well, the final topic for tonight is what is woke? The new idea out there, Warlord Jim, for shutting people up about wokeness is asking people to define wokeness. And I think it's a brilliant rhetorical challenge. And it's, the thing is, it's also absolutely stupid because, okay, there are people who have, have frozen up and not managed to do it. Not that we're prone to doing homework because the left wants us to, but I thought it would be useful to have a definition. So mine is an ideology that imposes identity politics, social justice, thought policing, climate hysteria, neo-racism, queer pedagogy, and socialist equity using statist, corporatist, cultural enforcement. And, and okay, that's not hard, you know, but we can figure out how to fight back based on what they're shoving down our throats. And that's really the key. Well, there was some uh, uh, semi-pinko jerk out there who occasionally writes things interest that are interesting. I think his name is Freddie DeBoer. Hates me. <laughs> Just doesn't like me at all. But he, uh, he wasn't taking any of this. He said... He, he wrote a substack. I thought it was brilliant. It was, all right, fine. You just tell me what word you want me to use to describe the massive social changes you're advocating. And uh, 
it, it, the define woke is really a giant distraction. They want to stop you from moving ahead and destroying it to stop and describing it. And see, here's the problem. You'll never describe it adequately. That's not what a definition is anyway. What they're asking for is a, uh, an encyclopedic description of it that, you know, illuminates every facet of the shabby diamond that is wokeness. <laughs> we know what wokeness is. We're past that. If you can't keep up, too bad. We're going to destroy it. But this idea that we're, we're supposed to stop because these guys demand a definition as if they don't know what the hell they're asking for or demanding. And I, yeah, it's just stop. I'm not doing it. Last time I checked, I don't work for any of them and I don't take yeah. homework from losers. And, and like you said, they know the, the concept is they want to enforce it on us and then use our own compliance against us. You know, because if you, if you give in oh, once, you're done. You know, that's the problem. You just have to de de defy the entire concept that they get to determine what the terms of our social compact are. No. They get, they get, they nothing. get nothing. They demand answers to questions. They don't get to ask me <laughs> no. questions. Hell, in normal life, people pay me a lot of money to ask me <laughs> questions. I'm not doing it for free for some pinko scumbag. And in the end, all right, you know, when we get down to it and, and this is our gesture toward it, their concept is simply to put state control over all aspects of our human coexistence. And they want to do that because they don't like when the founding principles of our country, which put that power in the individuals like you and me, we make decisions they don't like. So they want to take those decisions out of our hands and put them in a benevolent state who from cradle to grave will make sure that every need and want is taken care of, that we're never offended, we never have to do anything hard, and no one can be mean to us. Well, bullshit. Well, look, it, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> look, it's a state that they always run. Have you ever met any of these damn communists who wasn't like, yeah, and when the revolution comes, I think I'll be a poet. <laughs> No, they, that, that's all of them. None of them are ever like, I think I'll be a steel worker or a sanitation right. man. It, it, this whole socialist BS uh, is all about people who otherwise would have no power somehow talking us into giving them right. power. This is why you have liberal wine women, right? Okay, these are women no one listens to, no one cares about. They have no ability to compel obedience. Mm -hmm. They've got to whine us into obedience, <laughs> to nag us into submission. And unbelievably, you've got people agreeing to yeah. do it. And now we're back, now we're back to the, uh, the, the narcissists in the first segment. Like, Mike Pence, can you see Mike Pence going, shut up, Connie. Right. No. And that's the... Kiss my ass, you pinko bastard. But that's the, that's the only way to treat them, is to look at them and say, look, you do not, you have not earned our compliance. You know, the, yeah, you, get nothing. you did nothing. You've accomplished nothing. Your lofty ideas don't work here on planet Earth, where those of us who do real things actually make tangible, you know, improvements to the human condition exist. You live in a fantasy world and you want to pretend that as long as we concur, that that changes reality. And I'm sorry, it, it, men can't get pregnant, you know, the climate, the earth is not going to explode and we will not comply with your commie diktats. Uh, and that includes define woke, yeah, no. no. Well, you can't define woke. <laughs> well, then, then, <laughs> then, then it's gonna come as a surprise to you when I destroy it. And, and that's the game, because it, it's, it's not something we can come to terms with and decide. We can, right now, I always say federalism is our friend. So we need to tribalize, you know, we're, we're competing tribes. We have the woke tribe, and we have the reality-based tribe, the based tribe, and we need to separate. We need to do that, not because that's a sustainable way for the United States to be, but so their side can collapse, and it's happening. Exactly. All their cities are falling apart because wokeness makes, makes civilization untenable. And consequently, their, their cities are unlivable, while ours will continue to prosper and become more secure and more people will go to them. And then eventually, their side will, will be a place no one can go with no tax base and no productivity, and we will again control the world.
Exactly, as it should right. be. Because, you know, at the end of the day, power comes from people who can kick ass. And we're the warlords. We kick ass, we take names. <laughs> well, that's going to wrap us up for this week. And uh, we're not going to be here next week because we're warlords. And sometimes we just don't do stuff. You can't make us, as we have proven. So we need some warlord time. We need time. warlord time for, uh, for our own lives. So we'll be off next week. But we'll be back the next week with twice the aggression and twice the hilarity. <sighs> Ah, oh, I'm excited. I'm, Jim. I'm excited. I'm Jim Hansen, your East Coast Warlord. And I'm Kurt Schlichter, your West Coast Warlord. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends. Get them over here to watch the show. It's a great show. Tons of people are watching. It's a huge show. Huge. I, I can't do a Trump. <laughs> you don't. I'm just not, I just don't do a good Trump <laughs> imitation. Do a Chris Christie. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like uh, freaking uh, Ben Stiller at the end of Dodgeball. Ooh, or uh, John Cleese, at, or no, who is it? The guy at, at, at oh, God. One Thin Mint. Mr. Creosote. Mr. Creosote. <laughs> oh, little Monty <laughs> Python. Oh, gosh, I'm saying, I, 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 I've got to, I've got to, I've got to get somebody to do a meme. Here's a wafer, Chris. But it's, oh, it's a wafer thin. wafer thin. Hey, we need to do a Python movie thin. sometime, too. There's so many. Oh, All right. absolutely. All right, well, we'll we're actually out now. We'll see you in two weeks.